what are these things? These little lines we've been seeing popping up on the bottom of racing cars, street cars, um, even on the, uh, the new, new uh, GT3 RS, you know, we get, we're getting these little squiggly lines under here. What is the deal with this? You know, even on the bottom of a Ferrari GT3 car, we're getting these little air diverters. Hell, even back to the old Evo X uh, from, what, 2010-ish? Uh, you could have gotten them way back then. So what are these things? What do they do? Why don't we see them on other cars? Why does NASCAR have them? Um, and let's kind of just see what we got going on with, uh, with these based on two different tests. Uh, a short one, a short little curvy guy, which I'm calling a J-hook because it kind of looks like a J. And then the second test was with these longer strays. And just so, full disclosure, we didn't test it like this. We tested it when we tested these long curvy guys, we put six of them on both sides, you know, there was three on each side, we removed the J-hooks, and then for the J-hook test, we removed these and then put the J-hooks over here. So it was all balanced, you'll see it. Uh, but that was the test. Um, and we have no idea what we want to call these things, so if you got a name for it, drop it in the comments, really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right into the test and see what, what kind of stuff that's going to tell us about these things. So this is our test. Uh, run 5 is our base, so that means none of them at all. Run 6 was the J-hook, and then run 7 was our swoopy guys. Yeah, to have yet to be named. Um, let's jump to the, uh, the sexy number, the downforce. So, of course, our zero, uh, our base is zero because that's what we're basing everything off of. Uh, the J-hook's added two pounds. Oh, no. I did that again. Uh, let's go to our downforce here. And it's like that. Let me do it a second ago. There it goes. And so this is what we got going on for our downforce. So zero for our base, negative 20 for the J hooks. That sounds better uh, from what I remember. Uh, not good. Not good for the J hooks. The negative 20 is a bad number and it increased drag three pounds. So overall, I'm going to call that a lose. Um, and on our long swoopy guys, look at that negative five. Or we picked up five pounds of drag. And we gained 20 pounds of downforce, so that's, you know, it's, it's 20 is a good number, you know, like it's it's getting there. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say I'd be super excited about it, but let's kind of take a dive into this a little bit more. Let's look over here. 61 pounds of extra front downforce from the swoopy guy. 61. That's a now that's a number to start getting excited about. And but negative 41 rear downforce, like. I think it's safe to say, especially when testing both of these, that they added front and reduced rear, that these are a downforce shifting device. Uh, more kind of like a uh, canard would be. So basically, I, I classify everything into a downforce creating device and a downforce shifting device. So you have your wings and your splitters, you know, those would be downforce creating a uh, device. Um, the downforce shifting uh, device would be kind of like hood vents, canards are a big one, like canards are really big. If you ever see a dude running around on the racetrack and he's got like four canards on his car, just know he hasn't done any testing because all that does, all the canards do is take the balance away from the back and add a little to the front. So it's, it's a downforce shifting device. And if you have four of them stacked in a car, you just don't know what you're doing. You think you're, you're making crazy downforce because it looks good. It, it doesn't, it's, it slows you down tremendously. So, you know, chill that dude out. Go find him, chill him out. Um, but yeah, so that because they're downforce shifting device, and I think that's what these are, um, because of what we got here. You know, this is a, a direct comparison. Uh, I do want to look at our overall balance. Uh, overall balance before was thirty nine percent front uh, balance, so that means majority of it was on the rear. You know, it's at we were calling that okay because it was close to forty, and the cars have fifty fifty weight balance, and you want your weight balance to match, so you want to have your front downforce be within 10% of your overall downforce location. Um, you do that because as you go faster, if it's off, your car will have a shift. And it'll usually shift right around like 70 miles an hour. And sometimes it changes, but usually around 70. And you'll get this um, definite flip of handling. So your, your car will suddenly go to a point where it'll probably be like pushing or understeer or, or even loose at one point at like low speed turns and then as soon as it hits like a high speed section it's tight it's a rock and frankly as a driver 
personally is very difficult to handle a car that's that's driving like that. You can do it. You can do it. You can. Some people can do it really well, but it's very difficult. Um, what you really want to do is have your balance match to your weight because essentially what downforce is it is weight. So you don't want to have your weight flip on you when you start going faster because at that point. You're waiting for it to happen. You're kind of on edge, waiting, and then once it does happen, now you can relax. If it's matched, it never comes. It never comes on. The car just feels great from stop to going, and that's the real important thing for driver confidence and an ability to drive a car easily. Um, so we're always looking for a really good center balance. And honestly, on this test, we got it. it was, it's really good, 42% front downforce. I mean, that's, that's lovely, you know? Um, and every day we're trying to get this thing to drive on a tunnel upside down. Like, I mean, that's the ultimate goal, is it not? Um, and we're sitting at 1,400 pounds of downforce. At, you know, it's 150 miles an hour, 140, 1,400 pounds of downforce. We're 500 pounds away from driving this thing on a, uh, upside down. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Let's look, but let's look at the pictures. Let's look at the images because that's going to show us a lot more information um, and I want to tell you why we ran this test the way we did. So um, this will explain everything. So 05, 06, and 07 are our runs. You guys can't really see that that well. I apologize. And I want our swooping animation. There we go. So I want to show you why we ran this test in the first place. Um, this area right here. Uh, see this purple? That means it's not moving. You can see down here in the lower left-hand corner. That means it's not moving. Uh, and the reds are a bit more faster. And you can kind of see here the flow trace goes up and around, turns 180 degrees, and then starts heading back upstream in this little spot. And the bottom of your car, you want it to be slick as shit because you want it to be super fast. So uh, you want the air to be super fast under there. That's the point. And you're not going to get super fast air when it's going the wrong way. Um, and that's that was our big challenge right here. We wanted to make sure that we got this down so that way it would uh, perform, like it would be as good as it can be, uh, and not be going the wrong direction. So that's why I did the J test. And let's look at the J test. So you can see I added the J test, uh, the J's right into the area of that turn of that turbulent air, and it made it worse. <laughs> so you gotta see the purple got bigger. Uh, we were trying to make it smaller, and the purple got bigger, and that's aerodynamics for you. Sometimes you, sometimes you hit a home run, sometimes you, you come up a dead loser, but most of it is incremental, tiny little jumps. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of the G, the deal here. So everything's going the wrong way. Uh, purple got bigger. Frankly, the J hook test was a dud. But let's look at the the big swoopy guys. Now that's a that's a change, huh? Look at that. That to that. Look how much more red we got. So. Air really picked up speed <clears throat> underneath the car. You really got a lot of that going on under here. Um, and the purple got pushed out. Um, I was hoping it would push it all the way out, but it just didn't. Um, and our little Venturi air under here got its own little happy places, spin around and do its own, and just be a dummy and just sit up there and spin, which is fine because it's out of the way, it's not hurting nothing, it's hiding behind the tire. Um, the one bad thing it did is it it shoved this purple air into these uh, side skirt uh, parts right here. Let me show you. So in our side skirts, we actually have little diffusers in them. And these picked up 130 pounds of downforce. Excuse me for a second. So these picked up 130 pounds of downforce. It's not something we want to lose. Um, and we're getting turbulent air off of this into here. And that's something that amateurs really um, don't see often. Uh, like, I see that mistake a lot, I should say. We see a lot of amateurs come through and they'll put something in the way of the flow and it'll stop you from, it'll stop the, like this, something like this from working. Because they, you know, they, they buy something, let's say they buy, uh, you know, an air diverter and I see on my, on my CFD that it makes you know, 60 pounds front downforce. And and frankly, if you're a really questionable aerodynamics company, you'll just say it makes 60 pounds of downforce. You won't say that it reduces rear. Um, but even so, like most of those people building that stuff don't know that you got stuff down line. 
only you know, only you, the guy installing it, knows that what's down the line, and you can kind of look at it and, and pretty much get it right, is this thing up here going to block the air for this? And I see that all the time with a whole bunch of stuff. You know, all it's like people will do something funny on their roof, you know, and I'm like, dude, that's going to blow air, bad, dirty air all over your wing, and you need that wing to work, or hood vents, and, you know, it's the same thing affecting this. Like, it's, it's a pretty common thing. And getting and anything in front of a diffuser will affect the diffuser. Just, just know that. So keep that in mind. This is a perfect example of how that's actually trashing this part. Um, and so I kind of want to do jump over to the the downforce numbers here. So this is nothing at all, right? We got nice little purple pockets growing here. The diffuser is working well. You can kind of see that area is very big and blue. Um, and you know, it, it's working pretty good. Let's jump over to the swoop part. Notice the diffuser gets really small. Watch that. Pup, it's tiny, 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 you know. We're picking up a ton of downforce up here, but because this is in the air, way of the airflow for the back, we're losing rear downforce. So I think that on our car, the right direction going forward is to do a single one of these. To steal the NASCAR idea, just do a single one diverter um, right around there, and that think that's just going to clean up the air that's coming off the tire, and we won't be fighting so hard with uh, the air coming off of these two because uh, that seems to be the the challenge. We're running into this air hitting this, air hitting that, and it's just kind of just ruining it. Um, but I do like the idea that this is cleaning this area up, and this first um, air diverter is working pretty good. Um, it's just like I, I think if we add anything else to try to make that diffuser work better we're just going to be hurting ourselves at that point um, but yeah so I want to jump back over and kind of have some educated guesses now as to why Porsche and the other cars have done this so knowing what we know now I think that uh, Porsche is limited on their front splitter size because it's a um, you know it's a small splitter uh, it's got to be a road car. You got to drive through stuff. Um, you got to go through shopping malls and hit raccoons and stuff with it. And if their shopping malls are littered with GT3 RS busted splitters, um, people are going to be pretty mad. And I know if you spend a lot of money on a car, you're really edgy. You're really ready to get pissed. So I think what they did instead of having a huge splitter because they got this massive wing. And they got a massive diffuser. I think they added a bunch of these to get the front downforce back down, so that way they didn't have to run such a crazy splitter, um, you know, on the road car. Uh, I want to jump. I think the Evo ones. I don't. I don't quite know why they do this. Um, maybe it was to push air out to get this hotter air from the center out. Um, <clears throat> that being said, we were seeing a bunch of downforce from behind these diverters so maybe this is kind of like a centralized downforce add addition that they were trying to do uh, I think the Mercedes doesn't have one because if you ever look at the way they build um, GT3 cars it's the, the rules are immense um, they want a car you know that everybody thinks you get a GT3 car from Porsche it's the greatest car in the world and it's the greatest car that's ever been built and unfortunately it's not it's built to a rule set um, <clears throat> the FIA will come out beginning of the year and say, or the beginning of your build, and they'll say, we want your car to have this kind of lift number. We want to have this kind of drag number. We want it to be this heavy. We want it, or this power to weight. We want it to have this tire to weight, or tire to weight size. And, you know, and that's pretty much about it. So they're, they're really building these cars to hit a number. And I think, and they're always looking for advantages, don't get me wrong. Uh, and I think the advantage they're looking for here is that they had a massive splitter and they'd rather have the massive splitter and not do the um, the strafes on the bottom to save on some drag. I think that's why they did th that's why this one is missing them. Uh, NASCAR, I think, wants side force. Uh, let, I can show that to you. It's kind of a cool thing that Total Sim does. Um, click on the five and I'm going to jump over to side force here. Side force here, zero four six. Uh, if you notice through all of our testing, we've gained no side force at all. Um, and through just these two tests, we've gained the most. So I think that 
Uh, NASCAR always likes to have side force because it blows air out the sides, throws the air on, onto the passing cars, and really just kind of gets everybody stuck there. You know, like it, it, it helps passing. And that's what NASCAR really likes. So that's why they still run spoilers over wings and things like that because they want these cars to be punching a massive hole in the air and causing a bunch of drag so the car behind it can catch up. So I think uh, I think the added front downforce was good because they run very small splitters, um, and I think that uh, you know they that's there to, to help the make the racing a bit more entertaining. Um, and I think that's pretty much it on that one. Uh, that's going to be it for our test. If you guys would like to to get this data, it will be available on NineLivesRacing.com under the blog post. Uh, basically, we're going to be posting a blog about all the things we covered. At the bottom will be a link. You'll be able to purchase this down, this information. We couldn't do it for free. Shopify said we had to charge something. And uh, you'll get an email immediately, and we charge 50 cents. So if you will get I, I paid $900 for this, and you guys can get 50 cents. So if you guys want all this data, it'll be available there. Um, are that, you know, you know, like and share would sure would help us out. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's about it from us. Got anything else? Drop a comment or a test uh, request in the comments, and we'll be, you know, we'll get to them as fast as we can. Cool. Thanks, guys.